Coco Johnson, your lady of wellness. Join me as I address topics in all things wellness, from mental health, social disparities, and education, advocating for those who suffer in silence. Hi, I'm Coco Johnson, your lady of wellness, brought to you today by Rosa Sharon All Naturals. Change your life one tablespoon at a time. Hello, hello, hello. We're back again with Mr. Donald Bosho Martin. Hey, Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be back. Last time we, we kind of did, I was in a room and it was kind of like fuzzy, I feel like. But I'm in, now I'm in the flush, as my older people say, the flush. Yeah. I'm in the flush to be here. So uh, thank you for the opportunity again of being here. Thank you. I appreciate thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation because I really wanted you in studio because mm -hmm. it's more personable and we get to talk a little bit deeper, a yes. little bit more, laugh a little bit more. So yeah. thank you. Welcome again. And thank you for dropping by. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm honored to be here. All right. Let's get into it. Sure. So, you know, we're always talking about wellness. We're advocating for wellness, self improvement, betterment. And so I like your spin on life. So the reason I say that is, is because you are not only just walking the walk, you're talking the talk, but you're doing it in a way to get the message across in a different style. So you're a comedian, comedian, you're right. an author, and now you're an actor. Yes, I just signed <laughs> my first contract like two days ago, and we start filming. Uh, we start filming on Tuesday, and so when you was talking about the wellness, um, I think in mental health, I think one of the greatest things you can do is love yourself. Yes. I think as when you understanding how great you are and how beautiful you are and how magnificent there's you're unique because you know. There's only one of you. Yes. And so once you understand that you're a really dope individual, mm -hmm. then it allows you your mental, your health, and how you treat yourself and how you do things. Because a lot of people say this, I deserve better. You know, we say that whether in relationships, whether in our employment opportunities, we always say we deserve better. But actually, you deserve better from you. Mm -hmm. That's true. Like we look for everybody else to give us better, but better actually starts within. Yes. And so I think that's a part of the mental health. So in my acting, my comedy, and I'm being an author, uh, I just want to share with people that stop looking on the outside and look within. We can look up with your faith, but you need to look within because we have been given the ability to, uh, to have all the power that we need within us. Yes, indeed. Because if we don't know ourselves, then how do we expect to show people how to treat us? Amen. Uh, true. Yes. It's true. I have a great friend. She taught me that a long time ago about show people how to treat you. Yeah. It's and true. so when you treat yourself a certain way, people automatically know, they sense it that, okay, I can't go this way with certain people, yes. or I can't do this with certain people because they know their worth and let's talk about that so worth self-worth and how that reflects on not only after you figure it out for yourself how you can display it to others right so the first thing is uh with self-worth you got to understand that you're not perfect mm -hmm. because sometimes what we do is we thinking uh being powerful being great that we're perfect so a lot of times because we we're, we make mistakes so we we make bad decisions then we start internalizing, then our worth don't become what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step is understand I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not gonna know all the answers. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, I'm gonna jack up at times. Right. So, but then how you display is, because what you're talking about before is really you setting boundaries. Yes. And sometimes you can set boundaries without even speaking what your boundaries are. It's how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. It's how you uh, how you present yourself, mm -hmm. your, uh, how you your language your how you converse with other people how you do certain things it allows you to see something that is something different about that individual and it's really what you do in private that that because you're you're when you are a private success that's what you really want to be you want to be a self-worth you want to be a private success because there's a lot of people that are public success with private failures right and so in self-worth and self boundaries as you get to know yourself you understand I know my worth, so 
knowing my worth, it starts with me on how I treat myself. A uh, young lady told me yesterday, she was like, one thing uh, you got to understand is you got to have a day for you. Mm -hmm. She said, learn, pick out a day that's just for you where you get your, a manicure or pedicure. I get them. So mm -hmm. I get a manicure and pedicure, whether it's a deep tissue massage. She was like, because you're on the road a lot and you do a lot of traveling, you need to find out a time for you. And when you find out a time for you, uh, she is like, you are going to understand that you're going, your life is going to be enriched. And so I think that is one of the things you're not perfect, but how you display is, listen, I'm willing, I'm willing to take time for me because we take time for everybody else. Yes, indeed. We answer the phone for everybody else. Yes. We make sure everybody else got what they're going on. But when are you going to do what's good for you? Because selfishness the word selfish is, is a bad word. It is. But when you're on a plane, when you're on a plane, and the stewardess says, or the flight attendant says, if the plane is going down and the mask come out, before you help anybody else, put the oxygen mask on you. Right, right. Because you got to think about, I can't help you if I can't help myself. And I think that's one of the things in, in all types of relationships when we understand, especially in couples, I've learned uh, after two divorces, I learned, mm -hmm. but, and it, you know, I look at me, I don't look at as things that I could have done different, mm -hmm. but I understand this as far as um, the individual works on the couple. Yes. Because as you work on the individual, that's going to take care of the couple. So I believe that's the self-worth part. Yes. And so people, I like the whole self-worth. I like the whole self-help yourself. I love that aspect of it. But I'm really cautious. And the reason I say I'm cautious is because sometimes when we are, some people, if they don't understand what that means truly, they think that, oh, I don't have to do nothing for anybody else because it's all about me. Yeah. And I walk a fine line with that because I want others to know that you have to know yourself, but you also have to be able to project and do things in the world to help others. Right. So what do you what do you think about that thought about because everybody's in this, oh, I'm in self I'm in self care mode. I ain't got time for everything else. I ain't got time for you. That's a fine line there and people need to understand. So the fine line is, is, is really your heart, your heart. Mm. Good. This is what I understand. Like, you know, they say money changes an individual. Yes. It, it, it's really, it changes opportunities. Mm -hmm. If you're a good hearted person, mm -hmm. once again, you self care, mm -hmm. you're a good hearted person because of who you are. Mm -hmm. You're going to take care of yourself, but you're going to make sure others are taken care of first. What you're doing is you're just making sure that you are in the proper position mm -hmm. to be able to help others. That's true. And so that, you know, it's because you you have selfish, you have if people broke. Mm -hmm. You got broke people that are selfish. Yes. And then when they get money, they selfish still. still right. And you got people, you got people that will give, you got people that broke will give you their last dime. Mm -hmm. Understand when they get money, mm -hmm. they still gonna, they still givers. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why the thin line is it's really what was you like before you got this? Or right. where were you before you got the revelation? Because, you know, it, uh, people always tell me, like, man, you always been a helper. Mm -hmm. You always, but now I'm talking about self-worth, mm -hmm. but back then, mm -hmm. because you got to be careful, because so, sometimes you can help others because you want validation. Yes, there you go. You're not doing it. You're not doing it. You know, like, if I open the door for you and you don't say thank you mm -hmm. and I get mad, I should have never opened that door. Mm-hmm. Because you did out. Because I did, I did it out of you to yes. get to show me to show who I am. Right. You know what I mean? Right. To, to validate me. But if I open the door, you never say thank you. You never do anything. The point is, I open the door Absolutely. because because you uh, because of who I am. Mm -hmm. I know in order and just the respect I have for for women and how I was raised. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open the door regardless if you say thank you or not. Well, yes. And so I think that's the thin line is uh, when people say self worth. If, if they selfish, and they, they were selfish before they exactly. got the revelation of self-worth. So I think it's who you are anyway, mm -hmm. your makeup and who exactly. you are. Exactly. So you always have your tagline is God did it. God did it. I love it. Mm -hmm. So what made you make that 
your absolute like that's your tagline you say that all the time so it's so last year was god's plan mm -hmm. so it was god's plan i'm gonna be honest i never never thought i'd be in this position i never thought i'd be doing podcasts mm -hmm. i never thought i like mm -hmm. i i sat i i sit on the airplane uh, i was at one place did three shows in two days i was in the green room and i was crying mm -hmm. and they came in and and, and and brought me like refreshments of water. I was crying. It was like, so no, God did it. Mm -hmm. Like, so when I look at my life, I know it was God. Like, mm -hmm. I couldn't have never wrote this story. I couldn't have never. Author, mm -hmm. comedian, mm -hmm. actor. I'm a blue collar, worked 30, 40 years. I used to work so much. So I'm so now I know when people look at me, I have to let them know. I got this because of God. So God did it. Mm -hmm. So I give, God always tells me, tell me, I know one thing about you, son. You're going to give me the glory, but it's your story. Oh, wow. So it's That's like, awful. yeah. So he says, it's my glory, but your story. All right. So all I want you to do is go out there and tell your story. Give me the glory. And, let, and so the glory is God did it. All right. It's my story. Cause I did have to obey. I did have to put in some work, mm -hmm. and it just it just didn't happen like a fairy tale. Oh ah! no, I didn't cry. And I didn't uh, went broke. I didn't slept in my car. I didn't uh, had no money. Negative uh, bank account. Mm -hmm. um, all types of things that happened in my life. Mm -hmm. And when I look back over these things, mm -hmm. I know God carried me. Yes. So indeed. God did it. God did it. God all did right. It. I can't give no credit to nobody else but God. That's awesome. Yeah. So when people understand the whole idea, and I'll go around, I say this all the time, when you know it's for you, it's directly for you. Yes. And when people understand that, then they understand that there's no competition. No. There's, this, no. this world is full of many people, and it's a lot of different things that everybody has a gift for. And some people have the same gift, but they're not always exactly the same. Yeah. So when you, um, can you talk and elaborate on that a little bit of understanding? Because this goes with worth. This goes with understanding. This goes with knowing who you are and how to take care of yourself. Yeah. So it's peace. You know, I got peace because there's no competition. That's awesome. Because I want you to shine. Mm -hmm. I, I literally, mm -hmm. I literally want you to shine. I want mm -hmm. you to be great. Mm -hmm. Whether it's with me, mm -hmm. whether it's without me, mm -hmm. I want you to be great. So there's, they say what, 8 billion people in the world? Yeah. See, so I think worldwide. I really only need 0.0000001% to like what I do. I think that's like 80,000 people. Wow. So when you look at it, I just need 0.00001. So I need 80,000 people worldwide to believe in what I do. Mm -hmm. 80, that's that's a lot of people. Because mm -hmm. I'm not looking at just Indiana. I'm not looking at just Georgia. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking at the United States. I I want people to understand that someone in Indonesia, someone in the Philippines, someone in, in Russia, someone in Germany, there's someone now that because we, you you know, your podcast, YouTube is worldwide. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to click on this at 3 a.m. in the morning and see this young black man talking about self-worth, talking about uh, all the things and going to be like looking at him and say, man, if he can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And we may be doing the same thing. We may be doing, you may be doing the same thing that I'm doing, mm -hmm. but I still want you to succeed because your audience is different than my audience. Right. Everybody's not going to like O'Donnell for sure, Martin, mm -hmm. and that's really not a problem. Mm -hmm. I don't like myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so understand, but when there's no competition and there's enough for us to eat, now we all, got, we all got an audience. Jim just We're said all, something there yeah. about if we all have enough to eat, which you do. There's plenty. There's plenty. There's plenty. Even 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 with your, your products and what you do, mm -hmm. somebody may see that mm -hmm. and may do co copy it, greedy and on greedy, and come up with the same. And you got to look at it like as you got to look at it as like it's a compliment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, your mental health and wellness is what you teach. Mm -hmm. You want anybody. So if somebody else is teaching it, like I can come up with an idea mm -hmm. 
And if somebody takes my idea that has money behind it and do it, right. the whole goal of it getting done was not so it could benefit me, mm -hmm. but to benefit the audience. So if you have something that can benefit people and you may can get to that market, mm -hmm. somebody else can, mm -hmm. at least you understand that somebody is going to be healthier, yes. even though it didn't come through you. Yes. That's awesome. So we're going to take a brief break. Before we do, I want to bring up, we're going to bring up your book. But after the break, we're going to talk more about your book. Okay, sure. All right, great. Thank you so much. So today, our sponsors are Rosa Sharon All Natural, changing lives one tablespoon at a time. With our natural gels in various flavors, come check out Rosa Sharon. Now, let's get into this book. It's a beautiful pain. Why this title? Uh, why? That's a great question. Because when my journey, through my struggle, through my tears, through everything, I began to look at me. And I always say this, God had to cut me, and then he gutted me. Oh, wow. And then I began to see all the pain. I began to see all the failures. I began to see all the issues. But then out of all that, I began to mature. Mm. I began, began to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, out of all this pain, I became, I recognized my beauty. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing, especially being a man, we don't want to say beautiful. Yes. But and my masculinity and who I am, I wanted to be like, this journey has been a beautiful pain. Cause that's an oxymoron, beautiful pain. Yes, together. Together? Mm -hmm. But I will never be this powerful individual without my pain, but it's been beautiful mm -hmm. because I'm the beautiful pain. Oh. Right. So you recognize. I recognize the truth within. Within going back to what we talked about mm -hmm. self worth earlier, I recognize that everything that I need that God has given me mm -hmm. is within me. And so I'm like, oh, this is painful. Mm -hmm. But hold your head up. Mm -hmm. Smile. Brush your teeth. Take a shower. Put on some good clothes. Take a walk. Enjoy the sunrise. Enjoy, even though externally it doesn't seem like it's dark. Mm -hmm. Yes. But we're going to make this a bright day. So then I understood. It's a beautiful pain. My tears was actually my water. Yes. For growth. So. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah, so my it reminds tears, me of something my mom used to always instill that? in me. And my sisters, she says, even though you're going through some things, doesn't mean that you need to display that you're going through things. Yeah. So you reminded me of her because she wow. always said that. Yeah. She was like, get up, put on some clothes, put on, you know, take a shower, get up and eat, do something. Don't just sit in it because you got to think that generation had so much more going on in a different aspect. They had little information. They had, they only knew to work and they couldn't always display because it was just that hard mindset of get up, go, go to work. You got to provide for this family. And they were dealing with mental issues, but they were always taught, do not let that display on the outside because it was a sign of weakness. Yes, yes, yes. But in this spin of things, in the way you're explaining is that it's not necessarily weakness, it's growth. Yeah, because like you said, going back to what you said about like your mom and our generations, we're standing on their shoulders mm -hmm. and understanding that they had way worse than we had. Yes. Like, I mean, we still deal with issues. Don't yes. get me wrong. We still Definitely. got our, we got the elements we deal with, but um, I've learned that because I'm a very emotional person. You can see, I mean, I got tears in my eyes now, mm -hmm. but I'm a very emotional person. That's probably one of my sunglasses. <laughs> but um, um, I always used to wear my emotions on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. That affected all my relationships. Mm -hmm. My marriages affected my parenting. It affected uh, whoever I dealt with. So I just learned that, uh, like in the book, I'm telling you in the book, there, my first chapter is called Facts 
or feelings. I got two, I've learned when the deal, I have two buckets in my life, in my mind. Yes. I have a feeling bucket and I have a fact bucket. So my feelings and my emotions, I'm t- temper tantrums. Ah, I'm, I'm a failure. Ah, you know, I've been through this. What we all have. Ah. God be like, ain't nothing wrong with them feelings. Just put them in the bucket. Yeah. Put all them feelings in the bucket. And this is a daily thing. This is not, you do it one time. Because sometimes we have issues. So I put it in the bucket. Then he says, I need you to go to the fact bucket. Mm-hmm. And you just pull out the facts. Mm-hmm. The feelings, you feel like a failure. But the fact is you overcome a lot of things in your life. The, the feeling is you feel like you broke, but you understand that you now have a roof over your head. Mm-hmm. The feeling is you feel like you're never going to succeed, but the fact is you have you are doing better than you you are now than mm-hmm. you was last year. The the feeling is I feel like I'm never going to move forward in life, but the but the facts are you're actually doing great things and you're more of a no. The feeling is no one is listening, but then the fact is that somebody will call you and say you inspire me on your your Facebook live or your post or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cause I have feelings. Mm-hmm. Cause see, when the curtains, when the curtains close, that's the feelings. Mm-hmm. They come out. Mm-hmm. They gonna say they be like feelings. Be like, go ahead and mm-hmm. talk that good talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when you close them curtains, the real you comes out. So that's where the feelings is at. And then that's why I gotta. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay. This is what we are gonna do. Let me just throw it in the bucket. Mm-hmm. And then let me go pull out the facts. Mm-hmm. Because the facts is what's going to keep me from destroying myself. Mm. Because I see where I come from. Wow, so. wow that's deep. Yeah. So when people get into their emotions, and it seems like after COVID, everybody's in their feelings. Can't say this, you can't do that. Yeah. Everything is p- politically correct. And it sometimes feel like in a way that it's kind of like a bottleneck situation because you have all these things, but you know you have to have those distinctions of what's facts and what's just emotional feelings. And so I like that about how you put that in there for people to understand that about themselves. So in another part of your book, you talk about um, how when you grew up and there were different emotions as far as a childhood and things that happened in your childhood. And we kind of touched on that in our last um, our last show but I want you to touch a little bit deeper as far as how you decided to put it all on put it all out just get a book I mean pencil paper let's do this um one of the toughest things that's so the book the way it was designed so the the my actually the first chapter facts and feelings Mm -hmm. was supposed to be the last chapter wow I've heard that yeah Yeah. but I wanted to put it in the beginning and the reason why I did that is mm-hmm. because it was scared I was scared to write the book all right because I, I I deal with all my failures and God began to tell me and say if people is caught up in the old Donald Martin mm-hmm. if people are still caught up in your past they're not ready to go with you in the future yes indeed so when I wrote it I'm crying mm-hmm. you know I'm like you got to be kidding and, I, and I'm writing it and I said, I'm sharing my 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 all. Mm. It's some stuff in the book that my mother didn't know until she read the book. Wow. Yeah, I was molested at 15. Oh, okay. And so, and then I met my perpetrator. I met him when I was 27 at the time. At 15, I was like 130 pounds. Mm-hmm. Then guy. And when I seen him at the age of 27, I'm 280. Seen him at a Walmart, and uh, I don't think he's living anymore, but I seen him at a Walmart. And when I seen him at a Walmart, when I seen him at a Walmart, he was, um, I became that kid again. Mm -hmm. I talk about, so just talk about molestation Mm -hmm. and talk about, you don't talk about them things. Mm -mm. You don't discuss them. in the black community. Yeah, in the black community. So God had to just rip me up. My identity, because I hid behind the jokes. Mm-hmm. I hid. I hid behind the inspirational speaking. Mm-hmm. I hid behind all them things, and I bared it all. Wow! And when I bared it all, I was like scared to put it out. That took guts. Oh yeah, it, because 
because and even even and shout out to Kavina White, she was my editor and my publisher. Mm -hmm. I was writing it, and and so now you can write, but you also can do everything mm -hmm. uh, vocally. Audio. Yeah, you know, you can auto, mm -hmm. auto, auto, whatever. Uh, and so when I was doing it, I sent her one of the email, one of the copies, and she called. She sent a voicemail, mm -hmm. and she didn't even read the chapter. And she was like, "I want to tell you, you're not giving it your all." Mm. I had to rewrite some of them chapters. Mm -hmm. Cause I just wanted to write a book. Right. I want to be an author. Yeah. I wanted to. I wanted that title. Well, why? Cause I wanted validation. Mm. I wanted to be. Oh my God! He writing a book. Mm -hmm. I can walk around and say I'm an author now. Mm -hmm. I ain't just no comedian. I'm an author now. So bow, bow down. I, I'm doing great things. Titles. Titles. And God says, Oh, 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 oh! You need validation still. Mm -mm. You still, you still trying to get validation. You still trying to be accepted. So then God says, "Stop it. Let's do this over." Help my people. Yeah, and He said, "Because this book, you're gonna have people that's gonna read this book. That's gonna understand where you've been and where you." I got. They did a book report at Tech High School on the book. Wow. Three young men, and uh, they've read the whole book because it's an easy read. Yeah. It you is. can you can read that book. It definitely is. You can read that book in a, in a one setting mm -hmm. because it gives you it's it's like boom boom boom. I ain't trying to give you a lot of words. I okay. just want to give you my truth. Mm -hmm. So I got people writing book reports on it. Uh, I got people sending it to different places. Uh, I'm praying. Um, I'm praying. Also, I pray when people read it, they take it to the goodwill, mm -hmm. so somebody else can pick it up. Oh wow. Cause it ain't about. That's interesting. It ain't cause I, I'm. This is what I said. Like it was funny though. I think I don't know if somebody took the twenty. I got twenty one books that I. They were shipped yesterday, and I couldn't find them. Missing twenty one books, so kind of upset, kind of mad a little bit. But I was like, oh, if they did steal the box, the Amazon box, <laughs> they got some books. They got some books, and I hope they read it. Oh, wow. Because wow. at the end of the day, it's not about. I always say it's not about me. Yeah. That's why the self-worth is important because I understand my self-worth is actually to pour out to others. But until that, until I get the self-worth, mm -hmm. if I didn't have self-worth, that book would have never came out. Yes, indeed. Because with my self-worth, I know who I am. I really am not afraid if you read the book and you don't want to be with or be associated with Donald Martin. That's okay. Those ain't your people. Right, right. right. Move on. Right. But that's where the self-worth mm -hmm. comes in. Because I'm not afraid of rejection or abandonment anymore. Mm. Not anymore. That's I awesome. am so free. I am. I never thought I could be this free. Wow. When I wake up, it's it's really literally it's an out of body experience. I, it's like it's like, like sometimes I'll be walking behind myself mm -hmm. and I'll be like, "That's Donald Martin. Donald, why you did that? Donald, oh my God, I'm proud of you." Because the little Donald, that picture, mm -hmm. that's the little Donald. Mm -hmm. The little Donald is proud of me. Mm -hmm. because I was able to tell our story. Right. And little Donald is like, thank you. Thank you, little Mark. Yeah. All right. So we dug in deep. Yeah. We only got a few more minutes left. Sure. So let's get into the on the street, on the plane, everywhere, Donald Martin Fo show. Let's get into that. So you, you have a comedy show coming up today, yeah, right? I, yeah, I'll be in... Uh, uh, today is the 16th, so March 16th, I'll be in Gary, Indiana. All right. Uh, shout out to Counselor Spencer. He's an amazing gentleman. And um, and, and, uh, and Gary, and, and let me just tell you this story, how that worked. I did a show for a pastor. Mm -hmm. Did a Sunday morning service. He was shocked. He didn't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. I did some comedy where he's linked up with the, the counselor, the rep, state representative. He's, the state representative calls me and said, man, I, Pastor, what, are, what his name is, say, this man, I ain't never seen this man so happy and so excited about an individual. Hooked me up with him. I went in December, did like a 10 minute piece, and then they said, We loved it, so we want you to do a show. Nice. And so I got that going on. Uh, then I got to be in Atlanta tomorrow. I got a show in, in Atlanta. And uh, I'm just on, I'm on the road. You're on the road. And, and, and I, going back to, it's, I, 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 I can't believe it myself. I'd be literally like, wow. Like, 
this is going on. That's why God did it. Like, mm -hmm. I be literally like, I get emotional about it because I'm literally, I'm literally doing what I love, love to, do. to do. That's the thing. And, and what I love to do is to inspire others, not to do the comedy. Mm -hmm. It's not to have to be an author. Mm -hmm. It's not to be any of them things. Mm -hmm. But my, what I love to do is inspire others because yeah. I want them to be able to look at me and and I, and I say be a poster child. Mm -hmm. When they feel discouraged and feel upset, I just want them to remember Donald Martin said I can do it. Yes, indeed. Okay. Well, yeah. So you've been in and out of town, Indianapolis, yeah. Atlanta, Indianapolis. I saw you last month yeah, you at did. the All Star. You stopped by a booth. Yeah, yeah. Rosa Sharon booth. Rosa Sharon, that, <laughs> that the drink you gave me was amazing. It tastes good because usually healthy stuff tastes like cardboard. <laughs> it actually tastes good and it's healthy for yes. me. So I felt better. I, I, I actually, because on the road, I, I need to really be drinking that because I'm mm -hmm. constantly going. And, but that, I felt the energy. Mm -hmm. But if it tastes, what I like, you know something tastes good when you look at it. Mm -hmm. So I drank it, I'm like, <laughs> this is a rose of shit. <laughs> and so I loved it. All right, cool. And so we're about to wrap up. And I appreciate you stopping by. Sure. Is there any tips or any last minute words you want to tell the audience? So audience, thank you for joining in, first of all, uh, to this podcast. I want you to understand and know that become who you already are. The tips I want you to understand, you're not perfect. No one's perfect. You made a lot of mistakes. We all have made a lot of mistakes. But I want you to look at that individual within and begin to love on yourself. I'm going to give you a tip. Write down 10 things that you like or love about yourself. A lot of times we are focused on the negative things about ourselves, but find ways to talk about you. Brag on you to you. That's what I want you to do. All right. And how can people get in touch with you? So you can get in touch with me. You can follow me uh, on, on social media and Instagram is really why I need you to follow me. It's for show 413. That's F-O-S-H-O 413. You can follow me on TikTok at Fix Yo Y O F A C E Fix Your Face four one three, or you can do it with the uh, the dinosaur of Facebook <laughs> at Donald Martin the comedian. So uh, just follow me. Keep praying for us as we move forward. All right, thank you for coming on today. We want to thank you for joining us today on the Coco Johnson Show. Until next time, check us out on YouTube and Facebook, The Dinosaur, and Instagram. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Again, thank you to our sponsors, Rosa Share All Naturals, changing lives one tablespoon at a time. Thank you. Okay.